Welcome back guys. This is going to be the second part of our video tutorial series that we are working on. Uh, last time we looked at the very basic demo example for this little um, feature that I'm trying to, you know, uh, show you guys about. So basically we talk about we have the sprite images here, right? Let's look it into our sprite image and then we're going to look it into corresponding CSS, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> Here's our CSS. This is how the structs are going to look like. This is our div social container. As you can see right here, it, when I do a mouse over on the, on the code editor, it tells you this element, our parent container. The parent container will have another child container, div, with a, with a, a class, CSS class called social. The only thing I have here for that child class is just some sort of padding of 1% and margin. That is all I have. And then this is this is how our hierarchy gonna look like CSS selector. So this is my uh, deep main deep parent container as you can see right here. Any element the child of that element gonna be a div tag div container with the class social and then inside the that div container with class social we'll have a we will have the hyperlink tag. With the, with the CSS background called busy ground. And let's look at into how does it look like. I have some margin and then I have a width and height. This is very important. This width and height actually correspond to our uh, sprite. Let's look at in two. There is a reason why I had to set the width and height exactly 20 pixel, okay? To understand that, we have to look at into our uh, sprite image here. This, the, every, each individual image is here, like YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, all this icon is 20 by 20 pixels. It has a 20 by 20 dimension. Width is 20 pixel and the height is 20 pixel. That, that is why the CSS also that CSS width and height is also set as a 20 pixel. And then most important property, the background image is now set with this our sprite image here. So this is the URL of the background image, okay? That is, and then when we look it into our JavaScript later, you will see all of these hyperlink or anchor tag will have this CSS. And then, and let's look at the dimension of this, uh, of the sprite again here. So each of them is a 20 pixel. Like we're lo just looking at the top portion of the images here, the YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn icons. They are 20 by 20. The, this so it is a 20 pixel here. I'm just looking at the width. Okay, total width of the sprite here. These are very important concept to understand in in when you're creating a sprite and creating your CSS. That's why I'm going into uh, going into detail. So this this is a 20 pixel. The fa it's 20 plus 20. We got 40 pixel here and then LinkedIn also 20. That's 60 pixel. And then the distance between two icons, YouTube and Facebook, that is 10 pixel. And same thing, Facebook and LinkedIn, that is also 10 pixel. So 60, 10, that's 80. And then outside and inside of that image is a 5 pixel. So we got nine total 90 by 90 that is the total width and uh, width of the of our sprite image okay now when we now we go into our css here and then we have a common class defined here okay and after that before i will explain to you this piece of CSS. Let's look it into our our our, our um. Let's inspect this one into the Chrome browser. This is really cool fe cool feature in Chrome. So you can see what's really going on here. So basically, we have this kind of structure. We have this social, this is going to be the, our parent, 
that's where everything is starting. And then we have the deep social container root. Like here, we give a social container class. And then we have this child div with the class social. That's and then, as we saw in our CSS, this is like individual uh, individual icon, our hyperlink. This hyper, each of them get two classes. The first one is a BG ground. That's the common classes each of those uh, hyperlink have. Now, each of them also, each of these hyperlink right here also has their one separate. For example, in case of Facebook, it has a class called Facebook. In for for example, for a uh, for a for a for a LinkedIn, it has also a class called LinkedIn. So you can see right here what's really happening. For example, this is our um, selector. Here is a, so here is a and it has a class called LinkedIn. Now now the when when we are using this um, sprite images for our uh, to display the icon, the most important property is this one called background position. So why we set the background position to minus 65 pixel and 5 pixel in, in terms of um, when it is LinkedIn and we set to 35 pixel and minus 5 pixel when it is Facebook. Let's see why, why did we do that. Now we go back into our, let's say, in to, to understand this one, let's look it into our uh, sprite one more time here. Here, the very first icon or image right here is a YouTube. So it is located, this is the five pixel here, and then it's a five pixel from the left and the five pixel from the top. So that is why when we set the background position of this, we have to set it like, we set it as a five pixel from the left and five pixel from the top. And then this property background repeat, we don't want it to be repeating otherwise. And this is just the vertical align, we won't have to be in the center, it's in, in the middle. Okay, so basically, that's why the, the understanding of that the sprite and the width and height of the sprite where they are located in the coordinate system is very, very important. So, uh, next thing we have is a Facebook. See, as you can see right here, it is 35 pixel. It started from five pixels for the here, but now when when we when we, we when we want to display the Facebook, this particular icon here, it's gonna start from this is five pixel, and the whole icon of the YouTube is twenty. That's the twenty-five, and then the distance between YouTube and Facebook is ten. That's the thirty-five. That's why it is starting from thirty-five pixel. Uh, thirty-five pixel for the Facebook from the left but from the top it is the same level as in YouTube that's why it's also 5 pixel here and also 5 pixel here so as you can guess now you know for the LinkedIn so um, the distance between the Facebook and LinkedIn then all I did is just added the distance so it will be instead of 35 it's going to be a 65 pixel and of course from the top it's the same so I don't have to change. Just by doing this, then it the LinkedIn becomes speechable here. And the same idea for the Google Plus. It is a little um now. So to understand the Google Plus right here, let's look it into our this is a Google Plus right here. The left hand coordinates is exactly the same as the YouTube. But however, the top from the Y coordinates it goes down. That's why. Um, that's why we had to set the CSS for a Google Plus to minus 35 pixel. And the same idea. Once we have another image, basically we are adding the width, and we we are adding the height of the icon plus the offset from the distance between those. That is all we have to do. This is that's why you know I wanted to share this CSS with you guys. I mean, like you know, um, as a web developer, a lot of people we have been using this te this technique for a long time. But I have noticed that a lot of people who mainly work in the in the 
server side of the technology and don't use the client side, but they love to uh, write code in client side. It's very important to, to understand. Okay, that is the CSS part of our uh, logic. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about the JavaScript, okay? Remember the reason uh, I did this way so so that I don't have to write HTML every everywhere every time whenever I need to so I can just write simple well just have a DOM and then just give the ID and automatically stick it there. So to do that as as we as I discussed last time very briefly about our, the JavaScript API that I wrote. Let's talk about this one here. It's a social JavaScript here. So how this really works? Okay, so this we were talking about this particular piece the other day. So basically, what I had on line number, I'm going to close this one and bump the size here. Okay, so I have a JavaScript object called Social Anchor Builder, and this JavaScript object takes the icon, the the ID into which to build the, into which we're going to set that the media images okay social media images so here is the constructor builder and then it has a method called build social container let's look at into this method how it builds the that images okay here is our object called social a anchor builder and we briefly talk about this one and next thing we're going to talk about is how does it build it okay so here is our object using the prototype we can add a method called build social container it does this method doesn't take any parameter and then very first thing um if we look it into our, our if we uh, inspect this element again you will see see so it has a the the child container inside the deep social container root this hierarchy right here. That's why the very first thing I did is line number 20. I created a deep tag here using jQuery. I whenever I write JavaScript, I always write to like very simple method. That method just does only one thing. That way, you know, my code looks neat and I don't have a lot of functionality in one method. So if I need to create a deep tag here, so all I I have this little method here. This method just create a deep using creates a deep tag with the ID with the provided ID right here and the CSS class name and return that reference to when I call this one line number 27 I first create the parent and then I create a child here the same idea only different is I give a different ID and the class CSS class that we have just defined in our social.css classes and this code is pretty straightforward so what happens here on line number 31 before we call this method of course in the constructor of our main class here we call this method called add social tags by doing that all our um, our tags here which is a javascript array is already populated with the object on it so when these methods get called so first thing we're going to do, make sure we have some data in it. We have a tags. Once we have a tag using jQuery each week, basically I'm going to iterate through the tags here. And we have just we just have our callback function with the index of the tag and the in each tag right here. On each iteration of that, very first thing I'm going to do, I need to create the anchor tag right here. So Basically, here is our anchor tag. I'm going to create. I'm going to create the anchor tag on each iteration. Okay, so here I have this very simple method called create the anchor tag. Uh, let's look at that one. Creating anchor tag is pretty easy because this method right here, of course, remember it's a, it's a prototype based. In, I'm using inheritance pro prototype based inheritance, and it this method expects a tag okay so I need to pass tag here because I when it when I create the link tag here this is of course I'm creating the hyperlink using jQuery and I'm going to pass the class which comes from tag dot underscore class 
in the hyperlink where it is pointing to when the button gets when the link gets gets clicked, and this is the title that it, that will be displayed as a tooltip and the target property. Now I create the link tag and just basically just return the link tag. That is very simple, you know. Just for example, the very simple method just does one thing and does it nicely. Now, when these methods get called, I have a, I have a reference to an anchor tag in memory. Now, of course, I have to once I create the anchor tag, I have to add that tag into this is my tag. I have to append this tag into the child container here that we just created before iterating through the loop. Okay, and then once I come out, once it goes through all the tags that I have and then just comes out from the loop, once it comes out I have a parent container, I just add this uh, the, the, this, this is my parent container and this is my uh, this is the main container that I pass when the methods get called and this is my parent container I add this one into the parent container that is all I have to do just by doing this and then when this method of course, you know, these are all private methods inside the JavaScript. So when these methods get called, all those things happen. And then, because of our CSS and the JavaScript, because our CSS and JavaScript, this icon displays anywhere that we want to show. So, uh, in, in, so what I want you guys to know from this tutorial is like, there is a, of course, you know, I, I mean, like, maybe if you, the reason I decided to do it this way, like, later later on, let's say you would like to display some other, um, maybe some other image, other different kind of social medias in your website, then you don't have to write a lot of HTML, or you have, of course, you know, right, you have, once you change your um, sprite, and then uh, the width and height of the images, all you have to do is just add one line of JavaScript. You don't have to change anything. There is so many other ways. I'm, I'm not really suggesting for you guys to, hey, you have to do this way. But uh, there is either you can use JavaScript or maybe, I don't know, if you like plot writing HTML. You can do with so many different ways. Anyway, guys, that is what I wanted to share today in this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys until next video.